morning. Welcome. Well, today's uh, Sunday the 20th. And uh, we worked on that a bit yesterday, uh, doing a variety of things. Um, uh, mostly Scott was doing assembly here. I was I had a whole order of bolts that we we ordered a whole bunch of these Gold iridite whatever you call that color bolts that we're using for all the hardware here just so it all kind of is consistent and I was trying to organize that over into these uh, bins Over here, you know, there's a bunch of them missing and I, I got a whole bunch of labels to put on so I'm starting to you know I'm trying to organize them in in kind of rows, you know, all a quarter inch in one row and all of five sixteenths in a different row and a three eighths in another row. And then we have different thread pitches, you know, quarter 20, quarter 28, all, you know, all that stuff. So trying to organize all that stuff. I was doing that mostly while Scott was working on the car. He started putting the clutch linkage together and we got into uh, hanging this exhaust. And we learned something, I think. Uh, when we fabricated all of this, we had a mock-up motor here with a set of heads on it and the headers attached to those heads. And we built the system going back and it all fit <clears throat> really nice. No pushing, no prying, none of that other stuff. You know, it had it hangs on these on these hangers that have a little uh, a little bushing and everything that goes through a big hole in the hanger and it all lined up You notice the right now the bolt is hanging down nice and straight There's no angle to it. So nothing's pulling on it, but you also notice We have this hardware attached to the back of the flanges here and I can show you better from the other direction You can see here. We got a bunch of strut brackets attached to the exhaust flanges and that rod in between, because we, we, what we started to find was stuff wasn't lining up. Uh, we were prying on the hangers to get them to line up and the flanges, bolts, the bolts wouldn't line up. And what we come to find out was that during the welding process here, I believe, this is what we learned. You know, see the H pipe here. And we should have known better because you know what happens when you weld on stuff. Um, when we did the welding on this H pipe. <clears throat> Scott was concerned about that, so we put a we put the mock-up motor on the floor. I don't know if you remember, I think I've showed that in a video. Put the mock-up motor on the floor over there in front of the garage door. Put the heads on it, put the headers on it, and attached the H pipe to the, all of that when he welded that center piece in. So thinking that uh, it wouldn't move because we had it all attached. Well, what we didn't do is something like this on the back end of the H pipe. And it appears as though these things pulled together. You know, it, it uh, I, I would say it pulled in the middle. So I remember what was going on. It pulled in the middle so that the two ends here were narrower than when they were up here being when they got fabricated. So <clears throat> what we ended up doing yesterday, we came up with this idea of putting these brackets on the flanges and put the rod in between the brackets with the, you know, and um, spread the two ends out, you know, until, until the bolts on the hangers were hanging straight. And I noticed this morning, um, this one over here wasn't hanging exactly straight. It, like we had pushed it out a little bit too far. So I went the opposite way with the rod in, in between and pulled them together about Another, what I did was change the dimension between the two flanges by about, I think, a quarter of an inch. And now it's hanging like it should, I, I think. We gotta, I'm going to wait till Scott gets here. So what, what goes in the middle here is the mufflers. And when you put that all together, everything should line up. And we were having a big problem with that yesterday. That wasn't happening. And if you did, if you did get them bolted up, then the the there was a lot of pressure on those hangers and what that was going to do obviously you put some heat on the rubber when the exhaust gets hot it was going to destroy those um, those hangers so i think we have it now because you know there was going to be tension on them there's a little the way those hangers are made there's a a step in the little rubber bushing that goes through a hole that locates it so if there's pressure on that rubber going through that hole if that little step piece 
has tension on it going through the hole, sideways tension on it going through the hole. I'm sure when you heat it up, it's going to go away, you know. So anyway, we think we got that corrected. I have to wait till Scott gets here because you can't hang this stuff alone. It's heavy and, and it's awkward. You need two hands for the bolts, one hand to hold up the piece. So, it, you know, it doesn't work. Anyway, uh, more later. Bye. Well, that's much better, I have to say. Um, I actually put those up there alone, figured out a way of uh, um, supporting the, the mufflers while, you know, with some loose bolts in the flanges. And that I was able to, uh, you know, hang them up there pretty safely. But uh, didn't have to fight hardly anything. There was one flange at the very back of this pipe where I had a little problem, just enough interference to make it hard to get the gasket in. Um, loosening that hanger right there uh, kind of made it all work. So not much problem at all. So I think now it's kind of back to... Um, how it, you know pretty much the shape it was when we fabricated it before it got all welded up you know how that works welding you know, the heat changes the shape of things to some extent all right so anyway that's the the resolution or whatever the the answer for today's work But yeah, really. This is the current fun job we find ourselves in at this point since installing new rear shocks led us to uh, the decision that we needed to put a cross member up there, get rid of the original mountings <coughs> because the shocks that are the original specification don't let the rear end hang far enough to put the tires in and out, uh, you know, everything new. And God only knows what matches factory and what doesn't. So here we are. So we're not fixing the floor that we just fixed. <laughs> yeah, the, the original holes that, that the shocks go through and the floor will just get some rubber plugs in them now. Anyway, here we are. You know, going again, one or two steps backwards to go one step forward. It's good practice. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, there's another one of these in his garage. So this is a learning yeah, but it has coilovers. Experience. True. And it's just a frame, so all this stuff is getting done without a body on top of it. Anyway, bye. Yeah. Okay, well there we are with just a tack on each end of the of the cross member. Tried the shocks. And that's gonna work much better. You see the rear end's hanging all the way down. The shock isn't quite all the way open, so it's not gonna keep it from going before when it was attached to the floor. 
when the shock was attached to the floor, it wouldn't let the rear end go all the way down. That's why the tires wouldn't come out. So, uh, what you're seeing here between the tapes is where I thought the shock was going to live. Now, it's when we put weight on it, obviously the shock's going to come down a bit, but it's got this much travel for the suspension to work in. So, yeah, that's going to be okay. And there's a cross member up in there. All right, later. Hello there, everyone. It is uh, Sunday, uh, December 22nd. We're still here. We haven't uh, quit and haven't given up. Just been uh, doing a bunch of stuff that is really hard to photograph because most of it is buried. Uh, I've been concentrating quite a bit on, on wiring. Uh, and we got a whole bunch of that done. The uh, All the stuff up in the dashboard is finished. I actually have uh, a bunch of stuff out here on the motor. Actually, the motor is wired. Uh, and a lot of it is buried. You can see up in there where it comes out of the car and it heads towards the motor. It works its way up around the back side of the motor and down along the motor. Here's the... The main lead coming from the battery box, you see it runs through the rocker panel and then works its way over to the starter motor here. It's really hard, like I said, it's hard to photograph this stuff. It ends up at the starter motor. Okay, and then there's a bonding wire, a good size, you know, main size cable that uh, connects the motor to the chassis because the main conductor coming out, the main negative coming out of the battery box is right here. You see this big one that comes down and heads to the left is the main one coming off the negative side of the battery box. The other one there that's going up is tying the, the body. The big one hits the chassis. The body is mounted to the chassis with a whole bunch of rubber biscuits so yeah, you might get a ground there someplace. You might get continuity between the body and the chassis somewhere. This ensures that you're gonna get good continuity because it heads up. Again, like I say, this stuff is really difficult to, to photograph. It heads up and it hits the body um, right there. You see that stud right there? That ties the body to that main ground, a uh, main uh, negative right there. They're both on the same stud. Uh, and then, like I said, up front, the uh, the main positive is that red one. Comes out of the rocker panel, works its way through the trunk, out of the battery box, into the rocker panel. Comes out of the rocker panel here and goes to the starter motor. Up here in the front, there's another, like I said, another uh, 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 main conductor size cable that ties the chassis to the motor, because the motor also is insulated at where it's mounted. So now you got good continuity on the main feeds. And then obviously the rest of the wiring, the smaller stuff takes off from there. So that's what we've been up to, as well as uh, the shock mounts. We had to go backwards a little bit there too. The shock mounts, the original ones, mounted to the floor the way Chevrolet made this thing, GM made this thing. Uh, the, the shocks fully extended would not allow the rear end to hang all the way down. Uh, the suspension to hang all the way down. The rear ends on lowering blocks, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the suspension. The, 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 the shocks as they were originally installed, the, the way they were originally engineered and installed, and these are supposed to be, and I think they are, the same size, the, 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 the correct spec. Uh, they would not allow the suspension to hang all the way down. Consequently, we could hardly get the tires into the fenders without letting the air out of the tires. Uh, and they're bigger than normal. They're bigger than, this, than, than the, the, the stock tires, obviously. But that shouldn't be the case. The way it is now, they go in there quite nicely. So what we ended up doing, I don't know if you can see it up there. We put a, a, one of those cross members in. You can see that pipe going across. And actually, what we had to do is cut it in half and and splice it in the middle with a piece of a slip tube because uh, 
we found out the body isn't centered on the frame. It's off about three eighths of an inch. So one shock was one measurement from the frame rail on the one side and a different measurement from the frame rail on the other side. It wanted to conflict with the exhaust, so it became quite the project. And then we drilled a hole in the frame on each side, poked the, raw, the bar in there, the, the cross member in there, once we had it the right size and everything, and it was a, uh, Scott could only uh, weld uh probably 80 percent of it because you know when you get up on top you can't you can't get up there to weld we tried the mirror thing and all of that and it didn't work so but he did he got most of it he got more than 80 percent. he probably got 90 percent of it and so like i said the top we just filled the what was left with some seam sealer to keep moisture and stuff from getting in there but anyway it's all back together at this point we ended up you know this was all taped up again because we had to paint the cross member and you couldn't weld it you couldn't paint it before you welded it, so a lot of it had to be painted in place. Meant, you know, taking the exhaust back out to protect it. That's why you see it's wrapped here, it's covered. Uh, obviously, when you try to, this stuff is um, ceramic coated, and that coating is really thin. So you got to be careful around it with tools and working around it with other stuff. So obviously, we got it all covered up here. The little fuel line you see up there coming out of the uh, gas tank had to get removed the tailpipes got removed all this area got kind of covered up the, the the differential got got covered the you know the brake hose got covered and all this stuff all the all the stuff was already painted got covered so I could um, paint the cross member without getting overspray all over everything else you know like I said it's 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 miserable trying to do something like that at this stage you know it's just backwards but anyway we're there we're there. I'm glad it's done, but it's, like I said, it's done. We're there. So, and now the shocks. Uh, there's probably another uh, three quarters to an inch before they're extended all the way or where they're sitting right now. And the, and the suspension is hanging all the way down. So, like I said, that, that corrected that problem. So, anyway, uh, that's where we're at at this point. We're uh, moving our way forward. You see... From here, without letting the car back down again, you see we've got the steering column in. Dashboard's all back together. I need to do one thing on the dashboard, and that is to hook up the da the um, glove box light. Uh, I, I installed it, and I wanted to remove it, and I ended up breaking it, trying to get it out of the hole, so I had to buy a new one. And, and the new one's here, but I haven't installed that one yet. Uh, so anyway, like I said, all I got to do in the wiring on the dash is the glove box light and then the dashboard wiring is done. So like I said, we, and then Scott did the, all the rear end, uh, wiring. The tail lights are all rewired. The backup lights are, are rewired. License plate light is wired. The dome light up inside the car is wired. That's all part of the harness coming to the back. So that's done too. We're moving along. It's like I said, yeah, but I, I, I have, you know, you can't fill most of that stuff because a lot of it's buried. So anyway, there's where we're at. I'll show you the, the motor at, at some point in the future. I'm not going to let the car down and make this really long. But anyway, uh, have a nice Christmas, everyone. Uh, enjoy your holidays and we'll see you in 2020. Bye now.